Hi guys, it's Carrie from Salesflare and today I'm going to cover the concept of email workflows, how to set one up, and how to analyze your workflow. Let's get started. First, what is an email workflow? An email workflow is one or multiple emails you send to an audience after each other depending on certain rules, sometimes also known as email sequences or drip campaigns. There are two ways to create an email workflow, from the orange plus sign or by going to the workflows page and pressing create workflow in the top right. When you create a workflow from the orange plus sign, you can send a one-step workflow by creating it and simply filling it out and pressing send or schedule, or you can add more steps to the workflow by pressing add more steps in the bottom left. Clicking this will bring you to the workflows page where you can continue setting it up. No matter where you create the workflow from, choose your audience of the workflow by pressing choose your audience. This is the enter if field. When you apply filters to your audience, these are the criteria for your contacts to enter into the workflow. For example, you want to send an email workflow to all of your contacts that are in the qualified stage of your pipeline and you haven't heard from them in 10 days. When your contacts match the filters you set for your audience, they enter the workflow and get the entered status. There are four phases of the workflow or four different statuses your contacts can have. First is entered. This is when a contact matches filters set on the workflow. They're now in the workflow until they exit. In is when the contact is currently moving through the email steps of the workflow. Exit is, is when the contact is no longer in the workflow and won't receive any more emails. And met goal means the contact has met the goal set on the workflow and therefore, therefore has exited successfully. You set a goal by selecting an option from the drop down menu in the gold field in the configure workflow section at the top. A goal is what you aim to achieve from a contact when they move through the workflow. The goals you can set are a contact replies to an email, a contact clicks on any email, a contact opens any email, or you have the option to not set a goal. When a contact meets a goal, they exit the workflow and don't receive any further email steps in the workflow after that. In summary, if you want to send an email sequence until someone replies, then you set the goal to reply to any email. This is the default goal. If it's good enough for you that they just open or click, then you can set it to either one of these as the goal instead. A contact exits a workflow based on the following reasons. The contact meets the goal you defined, an email sent to them bounces, the contact unsubscribes from your emails, or the contact hasn't moved steps in X amount of days. This guarantees that no contact stays stuck in the workflow if a contact never meets the conditions to move to any next step. For example, the goal is to open an email but they haven't opened it in X amount of days, or you trigger step two based on if they click step one but they never click step one. You can decide after how many days of a contact's inactivity that they exit the workflow here. There are a few extra configuration options you have when creating a workflow. You can set it as a one-time workflow or a continuous workflow. You'll see a checkbox, email contacts who match this filter in the future too. When you check the box, it means it's a continuous workflow, so that's sent to all future contacts that match the enter if filter you set on the workflow as well. When you leave it unchecked, it's a one-time workflow, so that's sent to the current contacts that match the filter at the time you create and set the workflow live, but, no, but not to future ones after that. You can schedule a workflow here. This schedules when the workflow starts running. When you schedule a workflow to start in three days, for example, it means that contacts will start entering the workflow after three days, provided they still match the enter if filters at that point. If instead you want to add a delay between the moment a contact matches the enter if filters and when the first email step sends, this delay can be added on the first email step. When you add following steps to your workflow, you can trigger the email to be sent based on certain rules. The options you have are, you can trigger based on whether they've replied to or haven't replied to a previous step, whether the previous step has been opened or hasn't been opened, clicked or hasn't been clicked, or just trigger on when a previous email is sent. For example, one of the more powerful things you can do is set it up so that the email triggers three days after step one hasn't been opened. So that means that it will send three days after the contact received the first email step but hasn't opened it yet. You may see an option in the drop down menu that is disabled and has exit reason in parentheses next to it. It's not possible to select this option because you set that option as a goal of the workflow. Since it's a goal, meaning that when a contact replies they meet the goal and exit, that means you can't trigger a follow up step on this. They would never read emails and say exit before getting to it. You also have the option on each email to set it as a reply. 
By doing this, it will add RE colon to the subject of the previous email and keep the email in the same email chain as the previous one. On each email step, you can decide whether you want the email to be tracked and or whether an unsubscribe link should be included. You can turn these on or off with the checkboxes in the bottom left. As mentioned in the beginning, there are four phases or statuses a contact can have in the email workflow. There are analytics for these statuses on the workflow itself. You can see who entered, who's in it, who has exited, and who met the goal here. You can also export these lists here or even start a new workflow from them. Each email step in the workflow has its own analytics. You can click on the percentage on each step to see the list. Total is the total amount of contacts expected to receive the email step. Sent is a list of contacts that were sent the email. Interacted is a list of contacts that have or haven't opened the email and or have or haven't clicked on the email. You can change the list you want to see by selecting the option in the drop down menu in the top right. Replied is a list of contacts that have replied to the email and to see the list who hasn't replied, click on the option in the drop down menu in the right here. And lastly, failed is a list of contacts that failed to receive the email or unsubscribed. The reasons a contact could have failed to receive the email are if the email address was invalid or the email bounced. You can select a specific list you'd like to filter on in the drop down menu in the top right as well. Okay guys, that's all I have for you on email workflows today. There's a lot of powerful things you can do and we're really excited for you to set yours up. If you have any questions or ideas you'd like to brainstorm for what you can set up, you can always reach out to us at support at or message us on the live chat. Happy emailing!